Hey folks, how's it going? Okay, so what I'm going to be doing here today for the Cummings on in QG4000 community is I'm sure some of you have probably come across that it can be really hard to get parts and information that's outside of the normal maintenance of these things. This one spun a bearing, broke the rod, the crank smoked on it, so I'm just tearing it down for parts. But I thought this would be a great opportunity to capture the torque of the head bolts for you guys. So in case, for whatever reason, you're removing the head, you're pulling the head, maybe the head gasket's bad, maybe you bought a unit that didn't come with a good head on it. I want to capture the torque ratings because I don't think that's published information. I haven't found any information on that. So to try to help the community, I want to capture these torque ratings using this digital torque wrench that has a peak torque capture on it um, and give us an idea of how much to torque these head bolts to. Now what I've gotten away with in the past is just looking up the grade bolt and material and using a chart and getting it to what I thought was close. And that generator's up and running and is working great. So that approach did work, but I thought it would be nice to get some more accurate information that I could share with you guys. On that other unit too, I did reuse the head gasket and it's still producing plenty of compression, enough to keep the thing running. So you can pull the heads on these and, and swap them out and stuff like that. You'll notice uh, in the close-ups, I did take off like the valve springs and rocker arms and all that you can leave all that on to take the head off i'm just taking this off for parts either for myself for later repairs or uh whatever i think would be useful for you guys i'll try to get out there on craigslist since unless you're an authorized coming repair shop you really can't get parts for these which sucks because i'm sure a lot of you are do-it-yourselfers that want to fix your own equipment and not have to rely on a dealer. Right to repair, right? It's pretty important. I'm going to exercise my right to repair by trying to capture some of these torque readings and we'll go over it together. You'll also notice on the close-up that the one advantage that we do have is there are printed markings on the head itself that show the order in which it should be torqued. So at least we do have that information that they gave us an another unknown is I don't know if these are torque to yield. I know at least in automotive head uh, heads, the bolts are torque to yield. You'll know it's torque to yield if when you go to torque it, the specification will give you a certain amount of torque plus a certain amount of degrees to turn. And that, so an example would be like torque to 125 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. And when you do that 90 degrees, you're stretching the bolt itself. And so that bolt should be replaced. Because I got away with it on the last one, I don't think these are torque to yield bolts because then technically torque to yield is ruined after you use it. The threading pitch doesn't match anymore. So yeah, let's try to capture these uh, torque numbers for you guys. So if you guys have to pull a head or you're putting on a new head, you'll have uh, some more information. All right, folks, so this is what I was talking about, these stampings. See, we have one, two. This two correlates to this bolt, okay? Three correlates to this, four, five, and then six, this top one. So that's the order in which we want to torque our head. So keep that in mind when you're going back for install. So luckily, they did give us those markings. So I'm going to untorque these in the exact opposite order that they're torqued. So I'll start with six, then I'll go to five, four, three, two, and one. We'll measure those, write those down, make a list, but let's get started. Sorry, the lighting's not very good. Will this help? Helps with background lighting, I suppose. Makes it a lot harder to see those numbers. Okay, so here we're starting with number six. This should be a 10 mil. Yes, you can fit a half inch 10 mil in there. Okay, torque wrench is on. Okay. So our peak torque is about 15 foot pounds for that one. I forgot number five. Oh, that one was on there. 
64 foot-pounds on that one. Number four. Forty-one seven, so that one was probably to or to forty-five. Okay. Number three, negative thirty-three and a half. So that one's probably torqued to about thirty-five. And where's number two? Who does number two work for? Let's see. Okay. Peak torque, about 46 foot-pounds for that one. And then this last, the first one, is a 10 mil. So that one was probably torqued to 20. So let me write down all of our numbers that we got. I'll make a list, and then we'll go over probably what you should do in your staging. Because you never torque ahead just at one go, if that makes sense. Like you wouldn't just tighten this one down to whatever it is and then tighten your next one down. You wanna stage your torquing for heads so that the head seats as evenly as possible. All right, folks, so here's our list. Feel free to pause the video if this is just the information that you're looking for. But based off my experience in doing heads and based off of the information that we just gathered from untorquing them, this is the way that I would stage and torque this head for reinstall. Here's our stage one. So what I mean by stage is when you go to install your head, you know, you would go through that sequence, stage one, go through and tighten them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then stage two, you'd start all over again for your final torque. And that should do you just fine. Let's go over why I came up with these final numbers. So in detorquing, we had a discrepancy between three and five on our detorque, three and five. Three came back at about 35 foot pounds and five came back at 65 foot pounds, but four and two were our most consistent results coming back at 45 foot pounds. That's why I corrected three and five and kind of split the difference in a sense because two and four were our most accurate. And these bolts are the same size. They're both grade 10.9 and they're nine millimeter bolts. I looked up a torque chart that looks about appropriate for them. So that's what I would go with, 45 foot pounds on your final stage. Let's pull the head on this and see what the, uh, what the other side looks like. La -da -da. Now that they're all broken loose, it doesn't really matter the order. I'm just gonna go after my two tens first and then I'll go after my 13s. So if you mixed up your bolt order, out of your 10s, the short one goes up top. Okay, let's pull these 13s. And my hands are a little oily. Man, I've got a drummer down the street. It's not very good. Okay. They're the long of the 13 millimeters. and your shorts. That should be everything. You're gonna realize to pull this head, there is a little cover that goes here. It's just these two 10 millimeter fasteners, one on the front, one on the side. You didn't have to pull this intake. I just got it out of the way because I'm, I'm trying to get parts. I'm having a little trouble getting these studs off. This oh, I was gonna say, oh, this head should just pop right off at this point, and it does. Now, if your gasket isn't totally wrecked around your piston ring, where this is where all the pressure is at. This part isn't too critical. We do have a little chip that isn't too ideal. Let's get a light. This is our valve. How does it look? Not too shabby. Um, where'd my other valve go? Okay, these valves don't look bad. They could use some cleaning for sure. 
But we'll keep these and uh, hopefully give those new life to another engine in need. Okay, let's take a look at the condition of our gasket, see if it's reusable. So you'll notice that we have some tearing in our gasket up top, a little bit here on the side. This doesn't look terrible. You could definitely probably reuse this. And by reuse it, I mean I would just keep it on there. If you take it off of here, it's probably gonna rip and then it's gonna be ruined. Let's see if we can get away with it though. Just nice and gently. Because I've done this before, I've gotten away with it before. Now with this summer heat, you all want your generators running. Want them to be fixable. Yeah. No, we could reuse that. I would feel fine reusing that. It's not a big deal. Especially since it's not a big deal to get the head off. For install, we would want to clean off this surface best we could. How clean do you want your surface? Well, you want it clean enough to eat off of is the idea. No oils or anything. What would I use to clean it? I would use brake clean. I would use some of this stuff, brake clean, and razor scraper with a fresh blade on it. And you know, go around and clean it all up. But I'm pulling this head for parts, so I'm not doing reassembly. I'm just here to give you the information that you need so that you can reassemble this yourself. Something cool though, that since this thing is kind of already taken apart, let's pop this piston out and see what it looks like. If you're wanting to pull your piston for whatever reason, you just gotta get this uh, timing cover off. I've already had this one off before, so it should be pretty easy. Now this aluminum is pretty soft, so try not to go too ham. I'm trashing this cover, so I'm not too worried about it. And then if you wanna reseal this, if you can't get a gasket for it, or you're having trouble, you can just use some high temp uh, sealant from the auto store. That works just fine. That's what I've done on covers before. Yeah, these dowels make it kind of hard to get this thing off. Yeah, usually these things are pretty tough to, to get off, so if it takes you a minute, I don't sweat it. Just be patient. Okay. Hmm. She wants to be in her home. Give me some light taps. Cool. This would be a nice little trophy. You can see on this unit, this is why I'm trashing it. This thing got too hot. There was uh, very little oil in it and it was being ran on a really hot day. And it just uh, spun whatever bearing was in here. So trash this, trash the crank. Still haven't found a way to separate the crank from the rotor of the alternator. But there's that. So let's go over checking your head after you've cleaned it. Okay, so if you've cleaned your head and you still wanna check for warpage, you'll wanna check for warpage on both sides, on this side and that side. Um, so you'll clean your head super, super good. You'll take one of these straight edges. It's a machine straight edge and it's tall, it's you know rated for a certain amount of tolerance over its length. I think this one over its length is rated to be out no more than like a thousandth of an inch. So you just want to check your block like this. You can use a light behind it. See if you see light coming through. And if you do see light coming through and you want to see how much, just take your feeler gauge, slap that on there, boom, boom, boom. I don't have a tolerance on this engine. Every manufacturer has their own tolerance of how much gap is allowed. So yeah, so you, you could check it uh, if you felt like you needed to. Again, make sure everything's real clean. Look at your gasket, make sure nothing's compromised here and here. You can have a little bit of compromise. It's gonna cause maybe a slight vacuum leak, but you should be good. So yeah, there's uh, your torque specs and I hope it goes well for everyone.